signs and wonders. Absolute grace. Complete freedom. A place of no condemnation. Zoe Ministries. Where we dare to believe. Lord, I declare, Lord Father, this morning, Lord Father, you're in this place. Lord, you're in this place for healing and restoration, Lord Father. Lord, I declare, Holy Spirit, Lord, be fresh, arise in the people's hearts, Father. Lord, I declare this atmosphere is ready to soak in your presence, soak in the word of wisdom and knowledge this morning, Lord Father, not of a man, but Father, of your truth, of your word, which is the truth, and by and empowering it by your Holy Spirit. Lord, so, this is not, so it's not by might, it's not by power, but by Holy Spirit this morning. When I minister this word, the people will get free, Father. They will not look for offense or will it be judgmental or critical this morning, but I pray that they will receive something from God this morning to change their life, Lord, financially, Lord, Father. Lord, in that even their bodies, Lord, the hope the understanding, Lord Father, but Lord, I pray freedom will come. Freedom will come this morning in a great, awesome, glorious capacity here this morning, Lord, for our good, Lord, and for your glory this morning. So, Lord, I pray right now, you anoint my lips, Father God, Lord, this morning. When I speak, I will speak with authority, Lord, and by your Spirit this morning. Lord, it's not what I say then, Lord Father, but what you reveal to these people this morning, by your spirit in Jesus' name. And I declare already, Lord, Lord, financial upon financial breakthrough in this people's lives, Lord, to be healthy, wealthy, and prosperous and debt-free completely to the full, to the overflow in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, guys, I'm, uh, I've been meditating on this for about a couple of weeks. And then I write and write and I said, Lord, I have to stop and because I'll do it again a little bit more, and I have to stop. It's just too much. But something that the Lord has shown me um, is this, that we are extremely, extremely passive with our faith. So if I can give it the title this morning, it's called laying, laying Hold of Your Possession or Possessions, okay? Because you need to understand is that we as people sometimes have this notion, oh, whatever will be, will be. Am I right? We have this notion, especially when it comes to money or a new job opportunity or something in that, that whatever will be, will be. Okay? So we need to change this morning. So as I write this morning, I want you to see this stuff. It's going to be very, maybe silly for you if you've been here for the first time, first time in this kind of service. You need to write down on that piece of paper, what would you like? To be desired okay concerning this season let it be according to your faith okay if you can believe now right now for a 20 million dollar house you can write it down there but I don't want you to restrict yourself concerning material stuff also it could be spiritual could be physical maybe you need a physically maybe for somebody else it doesn't matter I know we are we're talking about finances today your business that needs increase you write it down this morning. You're for wisdom. You want extra finances to come. You, you might have made a loan for your for stuff, whatever, in the bank to get it. You can do that, whatever. But this morning, you need to write it down. You need to pay certain debt or certain breakthrough for your company, for your business, for your spouse, for somebody else. doesn't matter, you know. Um, money will be about finances. Money will be finances this morning. But I want you to write it down and keep it. You see, because you're going to see, as I speak, things will come up. You write it down. Don't let it f seem to be stupid. Please. Because I'm going to minister about this stuff. Um, I'm challenging you here today to challenge God. Do you hear what I'm saying? In other words, if you think and believe big, you will receive big. Do you hear what I'm saying this morning? Okay, it freaks out people. How can you do that? Let me show you. <laughs> Very simple. Very simple. Uh, you know, uh, when it comes to finances, when I minister on finances and stuff, people say, but Johan, have you made it? I said, no. 
but God says, I have. Do you hear what I'm saying? When it comes to finances, people, there's something that I know that God's put on my life to increase. Okay? If I ask many people here, if I ask you how many people um, is debt-free here, how many people's cars are paid in full here, you know, how many people, I mean, I had such supernatural debt cancellation how many times in my life. So I ask the people, did you ever receive that? And maybe a year and they will say maybe this or this. So what is upon my life, I've received so many times. Do you hear what I'm saying? I've received cars that's been paid for. I've supernatural debt cancellation concerning uh, credit cards, concerning, uh, I don't know, whatever. I, had, I received this stuff so many times. So you do you hear what I'm saying? When it comes to finances, I really can speak about it. Do you hear? You might have more money in your bank account than me, but I can tell you I had more awesome miracles than you <laughs> concerning finances. Do you hear what I'm saying? So why, why, why are you saying, Johan? See, I'm not an expert. I'm an expert on God's word and his truth concerning finances. Do you hear what I'm saying this morning? Okay, well, so I want every single person in this place to be healthy, wealthy, debt-free, and prosperous. I want the business and companies, or, you know, if you just have a work and stuff, that you will increase in your current work. If you're just a normal 9 to 5 person, that you'll increase, that you'll be debt-free. Don't limit God because of your 9 to 5 job, okay? Don't limit God because of your company. See stuff, write it down. Write almost things that's impossible. I want to double my income in the next six months. You can write it down. I want to do da 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 so forth, okay? Uh, I want to see my company expand exponentially, okay? You can write that down. The business deals you have at the moment, you want it down there. Whatever it is, a car, whatever. In Jesus' name, amen. You guys ready? All two of you, you guys ready? Amen. Praise God to be sport. You know, I want to see an amen. Why do I hear like an amen? It means, so be it. You want to agree with you. There is power in agreement this morning, people. If you agree with me, I agree with you. And the Holy Spirit is in this place. Your, your, your stuff will come to pass. Very important. I want you to understand it this morning. But I want to go to Mark 11, 22, 23 from verse 22 and so forth. Mark 11. Very well known scripture in the Bible. Um, uh, Kenneth Hagin seen it, ministered on it many a times. But I want to go through it a little bit, you know. And then we're going to get into the, into the depths of stuff. But the Lord has actually shown me when I was meditating on all of this stuff. <clears throat> and you can, you're going to just bear with me with certain things. That you, but Johan, you said this before, but now you're saying different or, you know, you contradict yourself. I want you to listen, please, okay. I want you to listen with a with an open heart and a, and an ear ready to receive and ready to change your life. Amen. But it says here, Mark eleven twenty two to twenty six. It says, so Jesus answered and said to them, "Have faith in God, for the should I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, in other words, it says, have the have the God kind of faith which you already have. If you say I don't have enough faith, no, you do." Because the Bible says you've been dealt with all the measure, the full measure. You've been dealt the, the faith of the Son of God. So you really have the God kind of faith. Many people do not believe it. That's why they cannot see their, their, their stuff coming to pass. Do you hear what I'm saying? But it says here, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and, and be cast into the sea, does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done. He will have whatever he says. Therefore, I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, for, um, believe that you receive them and you will have them. Simple, straightforward. And he says, for forgiveness and prayer. In other words, he says, next one, he says, Wherever you, and whenever you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, forgive them, that your Father in heaven may also forgive you your trespasses. But if you do not forgive, neither will your Father in heaven also forgive you. Now the last bit about forgiveness is this. It's very difficult to actually pray to the Lord if you have animosity of unforgiveness towards somebody. It's very difficult then to ask for something. Am I right? That's what the Lord says. When you come to me, have a clean heart. You know, say, Lord, I forgive these people, bless these people, whatever, even if they did me wrong. And then you can ask with an open heart. That is what he was saying. But this whole thing was basically saying, you know what? I have the God kind of faith, which you already have. So whatever you say, whatever you say, and you believe, do not doubt, you will have. 
Simple as that. Simple as that, actually. It's so plain forward. If you believe, you receive. That word believe, people, it's not a work. I have to work myself up to believe. It just means to trust what God said. And what you say will come to pass. Simple, straightforward, as simple as that. Okay? Nothing to it, nothing hectic to that. Okay? Love, I'm not going to go too much into that very scriptures, but you're going to hear, we're going to talk about that a lot. I've dissected many times, but it's pretty cool. We're not going to. But what we're going to do is, here's a couple of things the Lord said to me. Remember we've been teaching that you have been dealt with the fullness and all of this stuff. One of our, uh, when we be, dealt with the fullness, God's given you everything to, pertaining to life and godliness. You know, what does it mean? Yes, that means that God has given you a lot of principles as well that comes with the fullness. God has given you, you know, Jesus has done a finished work on the cross for you and for me. But there's still natural or spiritual principles put into place to enforce the finished work of the cross of Jesus Christ. Do you hear? In other words, faith, believe, receive, it's principles. Lay hands on the sick, they recover. That's principles. Do you hear what I'm saying? That kind of stuff, it is principles to enforce the finished work of the cross of Jesus Christ. Why? To put the devil on his place. The Bible says you have an adversary, which is the devil, but he has been defeated. Paul even says, pray for us because Satan has hindered us. I would praying is also a spiritual principle, okay? Praying can mean, you know, to demand, to declare, or whatever, okay? That kind of stuff. There is so many principles in the Word of God to enforce the finished work of the cross. We'll come to giving and tithing and sowing and all that stuff just now. But that principles and so forth is put in place for your benefit. Do you hear what I'm saying? It is for your benefit benefit you don't have to do anything in the word of god nothing i promise you god will still look after you do you hear what i'm saying god will still look after you it's just i want people to overflow and have an abundance to the full to the overflow in jesus name god doesn't want us just to survive he doesn't want us just to get by bit by bit he does not want that the Lord said to me a couple of years back, He said, it's time for my people to stop having a suffering mentality and start getting a prosperity mentality. Do you hear? Uh, how are you doing today? No, I'm just surviving. I'm just getting by. I'm scrapping by. You know, that's very stupid sayings, people. That is not good, okay, to scrape by just to get by. That is not what God intended for you to be on this planet. God has done a finished work of the cross of Jesus Christ. So when you are suffering all the time, just scraping all the uh, time by, that is no glory for Him. There is no glory for Him. That's why I get extremely upset when you get a car, guy or woman, whatever, they drive on the, on the highway or someplace, the car is almost falling apart, and at the back of it says, Jesus loves you. I get so vous. I get so irritated when I see that and say, because the world is looking at it and says, Shh, if God loves me, you know, then please keep your love. Do you hear what I'm saying? Do you hear what I'm saying? I don't, I'm not saying, I'm not belittling poor people. Don't get me wrong, please. I'm not saying that. You know, we need to help the poor and love the poor. But God is into His fullness, God is into prosperity. Completely. I love cars. You hear me speak a lot on that. One of these days I'll have my GTR. Don't worry. Then people can moan as well. <laughs> In your face. You see, of course, what happens is we receive these principles from the Lord, which we're going to get into now, now, you know, to actively rule and reign in this place. Especially if you're a boss, okay? You actually have to rule your people. Now, I'm not saying a dic in, a, in a way of being a dictator, but there is a way that you need to rule over your people. You can't just, if you're a boss, let people just run over you. Um, then who's running that company? Are you running it, or is the people running it? Not good. Do you hear what I'm saying? 
So we need to understand that there's various principles that God has given us to rule and reign on this planet, to have prosperity, to walk in prosperity, not to be poor. I always ask, who loves being poor? Praise God, we're at the right place. <laughs> who wants to be rich? Who wants to have more than enough? Amen. That's what God wants. And people don't like it. I said, well, that's the way it is. Prove me wrong. If you say, no, I just want enough for myself, then you are selfish. You are selfish if you just want enough for yourself. It means you're just looking after you. What about your neighbor? What about the people you need to uh, um, help? So we need to have more than enough people. You see, <clears throat> we need to understand that word, it says, when you believe, you must receive. Okay, when you believe, you receive. That word in Mark 11, it actually means to actively possess. In other words, you need to actively possess those things you see or desire or you want. Because we as people sit back and say, oh, whatever will be, will be. Okay, Sarah, okay, Sarah. And that cost us. We should actively possess those things that we desire, those things that we're looking for, our wants and our needs. We need to actively possess it. Because what we do is we are very passive when it comes to our faith. Very passive. Lord, I pray. Lord, I thank you. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, okay. It's okay. And you just let it be. You had a small little prayer and and hope it works, and you just let it be. And I ask you, so did you pray? Yes, I prayed. But, you, but the problem is then, after that praying, or after you get this thing that you're wanting for, did you speak? Did you believe? You know? Did you proclaim? Do you hear what I'm saying? What did you say? What did you do concerning your fight? It's not a work thing, but I want you to understand this. We get very passive with our faith we are not active with our faith and that's something we need to change many times god will speak to us to do something and we don't do it you see receive means to actively possess something actively possess in other words what happens first of all first there is something in your heart there's a desire am i right and in that desire you get a vision. What do you mean, Johan? In other words, when you are writing down now something here, what are you seeing? In other words, you need to get a vision first. I have a vision. I want an uh, increase in my business. So you get a vision. Oh, I'm increasing. I'm buying this and buying. You need, to, first of all, to get a vision. There must be something placed in your heart so you can see it. In other words, you need to see your business increasing. You need to see your finances increasing. But you only have a nine to five job. See, that's your problem. You're limiting God. I want to see my car being debt, being paid for in full. My house being paid for in full. There's something that you need to see first before you can actually believe for something. Do you hear? There must be a desire first to believe for something. In other words, without vision, my people perish. If you cannot see your company or you as an individual increasing, you will always stay there. You know? And you'll always complain and then you will remain. But if you start having vision and stuff like that, you know that you can move forward. If you cannot see yourself as being successful, you'll never be successful. It's just the way that it is. It's like me being a pastor. If I cannot see myself as anointed and appointed, healing the sick and raising the dead, uh, let me think about that. I probably will never have it. But because I've seen the stuff in my life, I receive the stuff, I see where God is taking me, the church has been moving up, 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 up. Do you see? What happens is to actively possess, first of all, you need to have a vision. After the vision is that you need to receive, uh, you re need to receive it. We might talk about our biggest problem is not believing, it's receiving. But we're going to talk about this stuff. After your vision, you need to receive it, but there's also faith in that. And then in that, there is Holy Spirit that needs to lead you and guide you. 
There's an instruction after you got a vision. You pray to the Lord to get ABC. You need to receive that. But in that receiving, there's an instruction that the Lord has shown. May I talk about instruction? The Lord has revealed to me this stuff. So you need to get instruction from Holy Spirit what to do. And then you will speak it like you have it to receive it. Do you hear what I'm saying? You will speak it like you have it to receive it. Do you hear what I'm saying? So first of all, we're going going, but in vision. Vision means like dreaming. Vision is to have a desire. Vision is to know there is what I, this is where I'm at. There is where I want to go. This is point A. I need to go to point B. You need to have a vision for where your company is going. Where you as an individual is going. Where are you going to go in the next six months? To whatever months. Do you hear what I'm saying? You need to have something before you. You sort of have to have a map, a plan. It's very important, okay? Not by your own ability, but you need to have something. So a lot of times, like I said to you, you have a vision. By the end of the year, you need to make 200 million rand. Okay? There must be a plan, but it's still impossible. Do you hear what I'm saying? God thrives in impossible. But there must be something you're aiming for or where your faith is at. Do you hear what I'm saying? That is the same thing. If you cannot see yourself being healed, do you hear what I'm saying? You need, a lot of people, when I pray for people, I say, you need to see yourself walking. Do you hear? If you cannot see yourself walking, you'll never walk. If you cannot see the pain going away, it will not go away. Do you see how important vision is? Vision is not just for money or for whatever, but you need to see yourself being strong. It's like, like German stuff. If you in gym, if you cannot see yourself increasing, getting better muscle, better weight, or losing weight, and whatever, then it will not happen for you. It will not happen. If you are going to the gym just because, oh, it's okay, whatever, you'll be the same all the time. You'll be the same. You need to have a vision. You need to see how you're increasing. You need to see how everything is getting better for you. You need to see it with your mind's eye. That's a vision. You need to see it. And actually, it's a spiritual vision that you have. Sometimes you'll get a vision as well. The Lord said to me, you'll be a pastor of a large church. So I start visualizing myself, the church, how it's going to look one day and stuff like that. I get dreams. I get understanding. Oh, it's going to be this big. That's going to happen. Whatever. I continuously remind myself, you know, what do I see? How do you see the church, Johan? How do you see the people in this place? I see all the time. So vision is very important for you. Vision is very important for you also for concerning your finance. You need to see that you are worth 50,000 rand a month. If you're only earning now, say, 20 or 30. You need to see that I'm worth, you know, 50,000 rand. If you cannot see it, you're not worth it. If you cannot see your company making 200 million a year, you probably will never get 200 million a year. Do you hear what I'm saying? If you keep on looking at what the economy says... You'll never move forward. What do you see? What do you see on a regular basis concerning your finances? Do you understand what I'm saying? The first thing to get stuff, you need to see stuff. Okay? When you see it, then automatically, <clears throat> what will happen, you'll receive it. So Lord, remember, I, I promise not believing, but it's receiving. And receiving is also a, lack of a better word, a believing. Because you see it and you see it in Lord, I receive it. This is what I want. Do you hear? But, but, after you receive it, it means now you need to actively possess it. And your receiving will be an actively possessing thing, okay? It means you'll be actively, you know, doing the principles of God. By grace, not by works, by grace, okay? Not a seven-step program, but by grace. You'll start doing this stuff. In other words, the Holy Spirit will lead you 
to do ABC in the natural. Holy Spirit will lead you to do in the natural. Go and see this banker. Do this stuff. Feeling hard to find this guy. You start praying. You're speaking. You're doing all this stuff. But you are led by the Spirit of God after you had a vision. Lord, I received this stuff. Now, Lord, lead me to get understanding, to get what, to fulfill this vision. To fulfill this vision. Okay. So there will be instruction from the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit will instruct you. In other words, Holy Spirit will instruct you to get your house in order, to get your business in order, okay? Your taxes in order. To, to, to actually to be ready to receive this abundance. In other words, how many people pray? Lord, in your heart, I see this car I want. Lord, I see this car. I proclaim this car. Lord, I thank you for it. Lord, in Jesus' name. And you tell everybody, I have a car, man. I have a car. Then I ask you a simple question. Do you have a license? <laughs> Do you have a license? No, but I have my car. That doesn't make sense. Do you hear what I'm saying? So in other words, Holy Spirit will instruct you to do certain things to receive the other thing. Hi, my name is Pastor Johan Mankies from Zoe Ministries, South Africa, here in Rudderport. I just want to say thank you for, for watching this message. And I really pray that God has touched you, He has encouraged you, He has uplifted you in Jesus' name. Also, I want to say to you, if you've never made Jesus your Lord, it is very simple. All that you say is, Lord Jesus, come into my heart and I believe and confess with my mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord. Very simple. Then you are saved. If you want more information about myself and about our ministry, please do not hesitate to visit our website and see what we're all about and what we have to offer. So I just want to say bless you again and thank you again for watching this awesome message. Amen. Bless you.